Well, I know that you're really going to love this edition of ETV Interviews because the guest I have right now has actually been on ETV Interviews before. The last time he was on, we got a tremendous response. I know you're going to be blessed by the word he's going to minister. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about abiding in the vine, remaining in the presence, clinging to Jesus. With me today, my good friend, Evangelist Joshua Kelly. Thank Good you to so have much. you on Encounter TV, man. Thank you so much. Uh, you have been up to what since we last spoke to you? Well, uh, I recently got married to my beautiful wife, Yvette Kelly. She's actually here on the set. She is. She wouldn't come on camera right now, but we'll wave. Yeah. Good to see you. She's here. Uh, got married in December, so now is six months. Uh, God has been using us to go to different places like California, Alabama, Florida to minister and we've seen incredible miracles, incredible signs and wonders. Uh, I tell you, David, the more that we travel, the more I see the existence of God. And uh, she's really, God has anointed her. She's a prophetess in herself and it's been amazing. You know, one of the things I love about your ministry and there are many things I love about it. I love your emphasis on spending time with Jesus. Now this, I, I already mm -hmm. know, People listening and watching this right now may say, oh, we've heard that before. I've heard that message. But but I think when it's spoken about by someone who's actually in the presence of Jesus, mm -hmm. people could talk about it. Very yeah. few are actually living in it. I think there's something that happens. My goal is that as people listen to you speak today, mm -hmm. I want their hunger to be stirred. I want them to, after this video is over, to just be desperate to get to their prayer room and seek the face of God. Amen. So would you please just minister that word you were talking to me about, mm -hmm. about remaining in the presence of God. Yeah, and it's funny you should say that about when we minister that people want to get into the presence of God because I prayed that to the Lord. I said, God, I want my life to be so full of your presence that when people get around me, they literally want to go to their home, go to their room and get into the presence of the Lord. That's it right there. I pray that my life would make people so hungry for God that they could not go to sleep at night until they've been in the presence of the Lord. And uh, there was a man, of course, m many of you know, Moses. And the Bible talks about that there was a tent of meeting. And in this tent of meeting, Moses would take this tent and he would push it all the way outside skirts of Israel. And as he would get in this tent of meeting, the Bible says that he would meet with God and he would become a friend to him. Now, what is amazing of why I love this so much is that Moses was not just getting into the tent of meeting just to see the signs and wonders. Because the Bible says that the cloud of pillar would come down and all the people would see it and be in such awe of what God was doing. But what Moses was more importantly thinking about that moment is that I want to be with my friend who is God. Moses did not care about the miracles. He did not care about the signs and wonders. They were all wonderful. But he could not wait to get into that tent and spend time with God. But the fruit of spending time with God was the miracles, was the signs and wonders. And I know that there's a lot of ministers that might be listening right now, many evangelists and, and pastors that wanna see the signs and wonders and miracles, but you can't get to the miracles until you get to the miracle worker. You can't see the signs and wonders until you see that He is the sign and the wonder. He was the pillar of the cloud. He was the fire by night. He was all of those things. And people, they treat the miracles as if it's a different part of God as if it's a, a, a subcategory of God, if it's, not, if it's if not the main thing of who God is. But yet God is healing. God is a sign and wonder. God is the miracles. He is salvation. He is deliverance. He is all those things in one. And when you spend time with Him, you get all of those things. So instead of praying, God, give me miracles. God, give me signs and wonders. When you ask just for Him, when you become His friend, He gives you everything that He is. That is the presence of the Lord. When you get in the presence of the Lord, you're not getting 50% of them. You're not getting 25% of them. You're getting everything that He is. And when you get everything that He is, people around you begin to feel Him. They begin to see Him in your eyes, see Him in your face. They literally feel the presence of Jesus upon your life. No minister, no man, no woman, it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have, how well you're known in this world. If you don't have the presence of God, you can't change anyone. 
It is the presence of the Lord that reveals the existence of Jesus Christ to an unbelieving generation. It is the presence of the Lord that brings the existence of who God is into the eyes of an atheist. I've been in services, David, where there were people who could have promised me that God did not exist. They could have showed me every theory. They could have showed me every scientific fact of why God did not exist. They could have said anything that they wanted to, but the presence of God is the existence of who He is. When the Holy Spirit comes down, when He imparts Himself into a service, there is no one in that service that can say, God was not in this place. You see, that's why the children of Israel, there were so many times they did not believe in God. But when they saw Moses' life and when they saw that the presence of God was upon him, they immediately returned back to God and say, Lord, you truly are good. You truly are God. You truly are going after our hearts. You truly are trying to help us out in the situation. The Israelites, they would go God after God after God after God. But then God would release his power through Moses. He would release his power through famine or whatever it was. And immediately their hearts would return back to him wow. there were so many people I remember a young man and this is powerful I, I'll never forget as long as I live I was in San Jacinto California and there was a young man who did not believe in Jesus and my wife and I we were preaching in this church and we had no idea he was there and later they told us we, we all heard this from ushers and um, when we gave the altar call the power of God was so strong in that building that the young man told the usher, I want to go up front, but I can't move from my seat because there's something on me. And so he said, if you have to drag me, drag me. If you have to pull me by my arms, pull me. And the ushers literally, I saw this with my own eyes. I saw a young man being dragged to the altar because the presence of God was so much over his life. Wow. The ushers brought him to the altar and this kid began to shake under the power of God. A young man that did not believe in Jesus, a young man that walked in there an atheist, had no idea who God was, didn't even believe he existed. Not only that, but he had two tumors in his chest and we prayed for him and immediately the tumors were gone. Wow. Immediately. Wow, wow, wow. He pressed his chest. His girlfriend was right there. He pressed his chest and he said, I had pain in my chest. There were tumors in there and they're gone. This young man met the real existing God and he walked out of there a saint, Only a Jesus. Christian. Wow. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. When you fill yourself with the presence of the Lord, when you get into that tent of meeting, when you get into the glory of God that Moses was in, you can walk into any church, walk into any building, walk into Walmart, walk in a gas station, and when people pass you by, they will feel the God that they once rejected. It doesn't matter how old they are, how old school they are, what, what denomination they're in, what religion they're in. If the presence of the Lord is upon your life and you begin to impart it into them, something happens. And that's what Moses craved for. He could not live without the presence of the Lord. David and I will tell you now, we cannot have any ministry without the presence of God. If the presence of God leaves, the ministry is gone. We have nothing to offer at that point. Exactly. And that's what it is. We're, we're not just offering gifts. We're not just offering a good sermon. We're not just offering a, 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 a time with people. We're offering Jesus. We are offering the presence of the Lord. I have seen people that were cry and had no idea why they were crying. People that would begin to smile and laugh with joy and had no idea why they were doing it. They hadn't done it in years. And all of a sudden, something changed. And that's what Moses said. The Bible says, I'm going to go ahead and read it. The Bible says that the Lord was going to leave Israel. He was going to send an angel and he said, this angel will destroy all of your enemies. He'll destroy every person that gets in your way from get you getting to the promised land. He'll destroy them right then and there. He said, I'll send the angel, but I will not go with you for I fear I will destroy you. And Moses said to the Lord, if your presence does not go with us from here, I will not take another step. 
You see, most Christians and most ministers and most evangelists would have said, Lord, I'll take the angel just as long as I see your power. Just as long as I see the signs and wonders, just as long as you take care of my problems, that's all I want. But you see, Moses was a friend of God. He wasn't just losing the power. He would not just be losing the signs and wonders. He would be losing his friend. And that is what Moses wanted the most is, God, I want you as my friend. And that's what the tent of meeting does. David, I've noticed this. The more that I get in the presence of God, the more the power and the miracles and signs and wonders have less value than God himself. I was telling you earlier today, I said, I love the miracles. I love the signs and wonders. I love the power of God. But if I don't have Jesus, I don't have anything. I could have all the money in the world, but if I don't have Jesus, I don't have anything. But I know that when I have the Son of God, when I know that I can get in His presence, when I know that there is trouble in my life and I can just step into that room, Jesus said, go to your room, close the door and pray to the Father who is unseen that He might reward you secretly. I know that if I have that place with Him, I know that if I can go to my home right now, even after this interview, and get in the presence of God, I have everything I could ever ask for in life. He is life. He is provision. He is healing. He is satisfaction. There's so many people that think they can find satisfaction in preaching, but really we, have, we preach because we're satisfied. Say that again. So many people think that they can find satisfaction in preaching, but really we should preach because we're satisfied. That's so good. People need to walk on the pulpit with the presence of the Lord. We are not qualified until we get in His presence. We are not qualified to be preaching the gospel until we get in His presence. Because any man that preaches the gospel without the presence of the Lord is preaching a deluded gospel. Wow. Because the presence of God is what makes the gospel come to life. It's what brings the road of Calvary alive. It's what brings the cross alive. It's what brings the Holy Spirit alive. It's what brings the love of God alive. There are people that have been abused all of their life. And when you preach on the love of Jesus, when you're in the presence of the Lord, it comes to life. That's what I love about the presence of God is that no demon, no power from hell, nothing in this world can top the presence of the Lord. And that's why Moses said, I will not go from this place unless I know you go with me. He was not satisfied with an angel. He was not satisfied with the power of God. He was not satisfied with signs and wonders. He just wanted God. I love but you're talking about ministers who will get into the presence of God, receive from His hand the anointing, mm -hmm. and then forsake their first love. Yeah. You and I were talking about how that anointing that was meant to bless you will destroy you mm -hmm. if you're not plugged into the presence. Yeah. You're talking about something so beautiful and I think so few people understand it. Yeah. Preachers that will get into the presence of God for the word that they're going to deliver to the people. You're talking about Moses. Moses went up to the mountaintop. Yeah. And like you said, when we were talking earlier today, Moses went up to the mountaintop to receive a word. And I thought, how often have I been on that mountaintop? Yeah. <laughs> and God gives me the word. I love it. And I get the word, but I don't want to go back down. Yeah. I don't, I'll say, Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to the people. Yeah. I want to stay with you. Yeah. There's some, some who don't have that. Yeah. So take about a minute now and talk to that minister, that evangelist, that pastor mm -hmm. that sees ministry like a career instead of a calling, that yeah. sees it as a job or a business. They want to do it mm -hmm. for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Talk to them about the true treasure mm -hmm. who is the greatest wonder of all, Jesus himself. Amen. There was a time when I was in Pennsylvania and I'd been in the presence of the Lord all day. I just, it was, it was absolutely amazing. And I remember at that moment, I had to go preach that night and I hugged my door and I said, Lord, I don't wanna go from your presence. I don't even wanna preach right now. God, I don't wanna even leave this room. And I remember I was hugging that door and I was crying, weeping before the Lord and said, God, I don't wanna leave. 
You see, at that moment, I found that the presence of the Lord was more precious than preaching. It was more precious than laying hands on the sick. It was more precious than preaching the gospel. But because God has called us and because He's given that presence for us to release to people, that is why we must go. You're listening to me right now and you're saying, well, I want to see the thousands of people. I want to be in the stadiums. I want to see cancer healed and the, and the people in the wheelchairs risen up. My friend, all those things are great. But until you know Jesus, you'll never see it. Because Jesus is the one that does the miracles. Jesus is the one that does the healings. You don't have to know the miracle. You have to know the miracle worker. Until you know Jesus, until you know him as your friend, you will never see the fruit of Jesus demonstrated in your meetings. Pray right now, the anointing is here. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, for every person that is listening, God, I pray the fire of the Holy Ghost will get upon their lives in Jesus' name. That minister, there's someone watching you been burnt out. You've been back into lust, back into pornography that struck you down before, and now you're in it all over again again. I break that curse upon your life that is upon your father as well. I break it over your life. I rebuke that spirit of lust and get out of them now in Jesus' name. Father, I declare, Lord, that the presence of Almighty God will go through this screen. I want you to place your hand on that screen. If it's your TV, your laptop, your phone, whatever it is, place your hand there now. In the name of Jesus, let the presence of Almighty God flow through them now. In the name of Jesus, let the fire be rekindled. Let the fire be reborn in the name of Jesus, those that have lost their first love. Jesus, I pray that you would be more real in their hearts right now than ever before. Let the glory of the Lord fill that house where they are. God, we pray, we pray, we pray that they would know you as a friend. Lord, we give you glory for their lives. We thank you for what you're doing. Raise people up that are in your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Jesus, Lord, Amen. I pray. Holy Spirit, set our hearts ablaze with love for Jesus again. Help us to love Jesus like you love Jesus. Yeah. Holy Spirit, intensify the reality of the Son. Reveal him to us like never before. Jesus, take us to the mountaintop. We don't want anything from your hand. We just want to touch your heart, Lord. I pray, Holy Spirit, as the anointing flows, that that one receiving this prayer now turn their eyes upon Jesus and connect with him like never before. Holy Spirit, make Jesus more real to us anything around us. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it because you agree. Say amen. Amen. I can sense the anointing, man. Praise God. It is heavy. You brought <laughs> such a tremendous word. And I do want to say this. Joshua Kelly, pastors, youth leaders, he's not just a youth minister, but youth leaders too. Um, anyone who has a ministry, and you can have speakers at your church. You can have speakers at your conferences. Get Joshua Kelly in your churches. Get him in your services. Look, I very rarely recommend people like this. I'll have them on the program. That's one thing. But to really push them like this, I'm telling you, Joshua Kelly carries the presence of Jesus. I can see he fellowships with and loves Jesus. And that really is where you find the power. Amen. And he carries it. He carries it. He's the real deal. I know him personally. He's pure of heart. He's, his motives are not um, ruined by earthly motivation. Nothing like that. I'm telling you, get Joshua Kelly in your churches. And those of you watching who can, support his ministry. Give to his ministry. This is an evangelist that we need. This is a voice that we need. We need a hundred Joshua Kellys. So help his ministry. Support him. Get him to speak at your church. And just show him love and support. And let's get behind this man of God. 
The earth needs what he's carrying on his life. My friend, how can we get a hold of your ministry? Is it a website? I have a website, uh, joshuakellyministries.com. I also, we're on Facebook. You can type facebook.com slash Joshua Kelly Ministries as well as Instagram. Which would you, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Instagram? Instagram uh, and YouTube. And those are all the social media. So links. can they get all the social media plugs on the website? Yes, so you can. W- so joshuakellyministries.com, that's where mm-hmm. you're going to go. And there you can see places where Joshua, Evangelist mm-hmm. Joshua is speaking. You can see how you can give to his ministry. You can connect with him on social media. You can watch his stuff on YouTube. Guys, this is a precious, precious treasure in the kingdom of God. And I want you to get behind him. My friend, thank you so much for doing thank this. Thank you so much. I'm, I was blessed to have you on. I believe in you. Thank you so much. Well, that is it for this edition of ETV Interviews. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.